of the uh, system of institutionalized racism. You know, I want to jog your memory a little bit because one of the two prongs of the NEP was for um, redressing of the uh, occupational imbalance. And that related not only to the uh, private sector, where the Malays were underrepresented, but it also related to the uh, uh, redressal of the overrepresentation of Malays at that time in the public sector. Now, that prong of the NEP was never honoured. And it was not only not honoured, but it was in fact made worse. And the blame for that falls on the MIC, which resulted in... <laughs> I'm just uh, making MIC. the point a little bit. Which, which allowed the uh, railway department, which allowed the PWB D to be uh, decimated of its uh, Indian labor force. It, the blame must be put on the MCA and the Karakan for failing to uh, push the equitable uh, redressal of uh, occupations and also on the uh, East Malaysian party. So, you know, I think uh, we got to uh, look at ourselves very, very clearly in the mirror and uh, analyze uh, what are the main springs of this uh, institutional racism and who are the main uh, state players and actors? You'll have a chance to respond later. Now, uh, before I uh, give the floor to the uh, last uh, speaker, let me just say something about Azmi. I want to pay tribute to his being here. You know, it's uh, in a sense uh, stepping into the den of lions, okay? <laughs> I have many friends, academics, professors in my time who would never, ever come to this kind of a forum. Uh, and I think that when Asmi writes about a brave new world, he's not only a writer, he's also an actor. He's a state player. And uh, I want to pay tribute to his... Uh, his uh, idealism as well as his uh, courage and he's, he's of course he's going to contribute also his intellectual uh, substance to us this evening. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, let's just over the top. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I like it. Well, you know, who wouldn't? <laughs> uh, I hope you don't mind if I sit down. It's quite a low hall. Uh, can you see me? Yeah. Uh, is that right? Because, you know, it's getting late and um, this is not nearly strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> you should learn, you know, how to properly get the right drinks. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that would that be great. Um, well, I, I want to um, thank uh, my two um, esteemed panelists for saying everything that I wanted to say. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just um, add little bits and bobs um, where, where I think um, requires it. Uh, both my fellow panelists both uh, mentioned Article 153, and this is like a, a very important um, aspect of it. Because if you're talking about institutionalized racism, and by the way, I won't be brief, uh, I won't be long. Um, our institutions are all based on the Constitution. So what's in the Constitution becomes of vital importance because it colors what our institutions um, are. Yeah? So, we, we have to deal with the Constitution. And I'm glad um, that it's been raised because it is absolutely um, vital and, and important. And uh, see, what, what, what people forget about Article 153 is that it has to be read in line with Article 8. And Article 8 says that we are all equal. It's, it's quite clear. We are all equal. Right? Article 8 also says there will be times when we are not all equal. But any act of inequality has to be specifically allowed for in the Constitution. It cannot be anything that you want. 
So, you know, 10% uh, discount for Kari Jalaluddin's house cannot. Because it's not in the Constitution. It's not allowed in the Constitution. So it's actually salah, wrong. Right? So, you know, there, there are other things which are unequal in the Constitution. Some of it is like, nobody's going to get cut much of a fuss. Like, for example, it says that in, in certain institutions, uh, your religion will matter. So, if you want to be a Sharia judge, you'll have to be a Muslim. Who on earth will want to be a Sharia judge? I don't know, but if you want to be a Sharia judge, <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you have to be a Muslim. Right? You know, and no one's, no, no one's going to get too much of a fuss about those kinds of things. Right? What, we're, what we're talking about here is, uh, you know, our education, our lives, you know, our day to day lives. Right? And, and in, in the Constitution, it's clear, you can only do things which are unequal if the Constitution allows for it. So what does 153 allow for? It's quite limited. You just have to read the Constitution. I won't bore you with it, but basically it's uh, quotas in education and scholarship, uh, but two licenses for trade, and um, government service, quotas in government service. So it's actually, it's, it's very narrow, the kinds of uh, things you can do which are unequal. And on top of that, I mean, uh, Kiasu mentioned this, yeah? there's an element of reasonableness. Okay? So that means any a a action which is done, uh, which is so-called authoritative action under 153, has got to be reasonable. Now, if you say something is reasonable or not, that means it can be questioned. Right? So if, if you do something which is unreasonable, then it's unconstitutional. But then how do you know whether it's unreasonable or not? It has to be questioned. It has to be challenged, and it has to be decided for decided in court. That's the proper way, okay? But how will these ayams uh, interpret 153 is? <laughs> you cannot question anything about 153. Okay, even if we take that statement as correct, okay, fine, all right, okay, Sedition Act, <laughs> all right, Resolution Act, whatever you want to call it, all right? Even if we can't question 153, surely we can question the implementation of 153 because the 153 has to be implemented properly. It needs to be constitutional. But that's not how these people think because they don't think. <laughs> Cannot think. <laughs> oh, by the way, the Agung, he doesn't actually have any real power in his experiment. All this stuff, that, you know, when he says Agung does this, Agung does that, it's, it's under advice. The Agong only has two real powers. One is to appoint a prime minister, and the other one is to uh, dissolve parliament, or not to dissolve parliament if he chooses not to. That's the only two powers he has. So everything else is, is not the Agong. I personally think we should just leave the Agong alone, and the Agong should leave us alone. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that's that. And, and, you know, and, and there are other things in the Constitution. For example, there's Article 136, which says that no one in the federal service can be discriminated against. So all these things about the civil service, and the reason why non malays don't join the civil service is because they're not going to get promoted. Right? I mean, or, you know, uh, the uh, university vice chancellor, you know, it's not jazz, non malays There's people like me also, we'll never be vice chancellor. <laughs> Okay. And, 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 but actually, the Constitution says you cannot be discriminated against in the service. But no one talks about that. No one talks about that. You know, Ibrahim Ali, in all his rotundness, <laughs> says he's a defender of the Constitution. Yeah, defend 136, why don't you? <laughs> right? Of course you won't. So these are certain, certain things. So basically, yeah, for me, the, the problem, yes, the Constitution allows for certain things, and, and the, the trouble is it's been totally and utterly uh, abused. And why is that? Because I think we've lost any sense of aspiration. This country has lost any sense of philosophy. This country has lost any sense of idealism. We've become so pragmatic. So what, what, we, what they've been doing is they've been taking these uh, provisions and they're not making decisions based on any sort of overarching ideal of equality. They're making decisions based purely on greed and pragmatism. And let's be frank, we are all equally guilty because how the hell else is by some action being in power all this time? Because we've been pragmatic. All of us have been pragmatic. Support, we're scared. We 
all he could do today, I'm sorry, the whole bloody country. I've never voted for them incidentally. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're talking about institutional racism, yes, um, you know, all the everything else, you know, all, all the issues have been have been talked about. Um, schools. I just want to make a special mention here in, about schools. It's not just about uh, the, the the facilities and the, the lack of uh, facilities for for certain types of schools. If you look at the syllabus from now, uh, Teki and I have been working on this. Uh, the history syllabus, for example, the tone of the history syllabus is racist. It's totally racist. It talks about Kaun Pandatang, you know, it's perpetually pushing this idea, right, that some people belong here and some people actually are lucky to be allowed to be here. It pushes that. And this is what's being taught to our children. Right? And, and on top of that, all the Malaysian textbooks now have one Malaysian on it. You're lucky at Kremlin, you know. Government propaganda in schools, there you go. And then, um, but you know, okay, look, I, at, the, at the end of it all, ultimately, it, it boils down to a certain extent to, it's just uh, our attitude also. I mean, look at our politics, huh? Just, okay, forget about the fact that the political parties are racially based. Okay? We, we, we talk about uh, in elections, huh? Oh, this is a Malay area. This is a Chinese area. This area has a large number of Indians. You're making political decisions based, election decisions based on race. Not what issues anymore, you know. It's race. So who do we put up here? Someone who will be uh, acceptable to, to, the, to, the, to the people in, in that area. I know. That's, that's how, how, how low we have sunk. And you know, I mean, uh, I mean, they, they mentioned about you know me coming here. Actually, you know, it's it's, it's not a big deal. I, I have been known as Pontianak Melayu for a long time already. Um, but you see, that's the thing. You see, you you know, you you, you it, it's. I'm sorry to say this, though. Yeah? I mean, like, for example, you know, if, if I say things like what, what I'm saying now, all right, and, and uh, whoever you know will say, oh, ask me Pontianak Melayu. Alright? I mean, people will say, hey, how are Dona say things like that? You know, that's not, that's not good, you know? But then, you know, and, and usually it's, it's normal days who say, you know, hey, Dona say like that, it's, it's not nice, you know? He's just making a point, but don't talk like that. And then someone like uh, Kuke Kim says something against Chinese school, for example, and Chinese people say, hey, from Kena China! <laughs> My point is that, huh? it's deep inside us, you know? It's not just about the law, it's not just about the institutions, it's also about us as a people. That knee-jerk reaction. And that's the that's the toughest thing to get rid of, which brings me to my next point. What do we do? Race Relations Act, hold up, forget it. It's rubbish. I can guarantee you now, how can you have a system with a constitution like ours and say that you want to have a race relations act? You cannot. It, it, you cannot balance the two. You, you cannot. Yeah, and on top of that, I can guarantee you, yes, you're right, it will be used against us. It won't be used against Ibrahim Ali, it won't be used against those kinds of idiots. It will be used against people like us who are not idiots. <laughs>